Hi, welcome back to Behind the Bumpers. I'm Adam, and we are here at the Indiana District Championship. I'm here with Team 4272 and their two representatives, Aaron and Danny, here to talk about their robot, featuring an elevator, a pivoting shooter, and a very simplified climb. That and much more will be talked about in Behind the Bumpers. Support Fun's content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fun members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support. Okay, so Aaron, do you want to start by giving a general overview of the robot? You were very proud of the Under the Bumper intake. Yes. So. We start with our swerves. We've got Mark IV eyes, but they're custom. Um, we've got an adapter plate that allows us to have a different gear ratio that allows us to go faster than even an L3 while still retaining some of the uh, acceleration that we like. Additionally, we've also got 3D printed covers that allow us to simplify our wiring and be able to replace five bolts and be able to replace the entire swerve in less than 10 minutes. From there, we're gonna to move to our intake, which is an under the bumper intake. Um, it's something that took a lot of getting used to, uh, a lot of design work, but as you can see there, it's got some rollers and then some uh, indexers that then allow us to funnel the note from anywhere on the front of the robot into our shooter. From there, it goes into the feeder right over here and it stages in this little belted section and that it stays there until we're ready to shoot it. Um, that belted section is part of our feeder, part of our shooter, which is also on a rotating gear here. And that is on an elevator, which then can raise up and down. That allows us, we talked with our, our strategy team at the very beginning to to see what we wanted to be able to do. This allows us to be able to shoot over defense, including smiley defense, be able to drop down into amp, and be able to, to keep it low and shoot up into speaker. Additionally, we also added recently uh, a climber to our elevator system, which allows us to have a very, very simplistic climbing system that doesn't require an entirely new mechanism, and it just works. It allows us to harmonize really, really well, really fast. Lastly is our shooter. It's pretty stock standard, pretty usual thing. Um, however, we have two separate motors here that allow us to speed them or to, to power them at different speeds that then allow us to shoot up or down or however we need to, to be able to get the most accurate shot possible. So uh, Danny, there's a lot of work on the programming side for logs, uh, tracking logs, and you know, a lot of automation. Can you go into a little more detail on that? Uh, yeah, I can. So one of the things that we use the logs for the most is battery voltage. Um, we use this so that way we can, we can look at uh, batteries and determine whether or not they're actually a good battery. Um, like if we know that, if we notice that it's much lower than other batteries or even that it's browning out much earlier, we'll take it out of circulation, especially at a competition because we can't, we just can't deal with that, especially during ELIMS. And if we know a battery is bad earlier, I can actually show you the battery voltage. Yeah. Um, if we know that it's, it's a uh, bad earlier in quals, this was actually, this was an all right battery. Um, we can, we can take it out of circulation and not have to deal with that kind of thing in ELIMS. Um, another thing we use it for is diagnosing mechanical issues. Like if I notice that the elevator motor has is pulling an unusually high current, I can be like, hey, something might be binding here. Or if we, or whatever, like drive team will also come to me with issues and I'll search through the logs to see if I can confirm it and find a reason. Um, earlier or yesterday during our last quals match, uh, we weren't intaking and I looked through the logs and realized that our operator just made a mistake and hit a button that he wasn't supposed to. So we were fixing that and yeah, again, just some small applications of our logs. Nice, nice. And then there's a lot of automation in both how you shoot as well as uh, things like how you climb, how you intake. Uh, can you own a little more how you implement those in the code? Uh, yeah, so what we do for at least the shooting is that we've gone to a bunch of different distances, figured out what angle we need to put our shooter at. And then from there, we just, we just do a linear interpolation. Um, basically we take our two points draw a line and sample that line. 
Um, but we've done that for a bunch of different points, and we draw lines in between all of those different points. It's kind of complicated, but that's what we do. Um, and then we just use our odometry to always face towards the speaker. Or not to face towards the speaker when we're trying to auto aim. So can you go ahead and show the path the note would take to score? Absolutely. So it'll start off in our intake, then it'll go into our feeder. That feeder will then change position. So it can go to the amp set point, and then from there it'll shoot out. So go ahead. And there you go. That was Team 4272 Maverick Robotics competing here at the Indiana State Championship. Good luck to you all. And I have a, have a good rest of your season. Support funds content creators when you sign up for a membership on YouTube Join. You'll get access to special perks like emotes, loyalty badges, and fund members will even get early access to our scheduled videos and more. 100% of this revenue will go back to our correspondents to help recognize their efforts. Click the Join button in any YouTube video to pledge your support.